Hello and welcome to the next part of this tutorial series. Today we are going to be fixing a couple of bugs and introducing the score component and some kind of losing game state. So right now when this tile falls down and finishes up the row, we are going to get rid of the row and then increment our score. And we are also going to implement a losing screen. So right here, once I lose with the next tile, we are going to have a game over screen and an end score of one right here because we ended with the score of one. Awesome. So let's stop talking and let's start coding. We got a lot to do today. Let's start with opening the game.dart file and let's scroll down at the top of the game class right here, the stateful game class. And in here we can declare a new integer and let's call this the score and set it equal to zero at the start. And we are going to in increment the score each time we remove a line. So let's find the remove line or remove row I mean function. And right here at the end of the state right here, we can do score plus equals one so that we increment the score each time we remove move a line. So now we keep track of the score of the player. So let's look at what we want to actually do with our game display. So this is basically our display. So here we have some kind of game screen. And what I want to do is add some kind of score display here. So let's say the score is one and then set the buttons above each other. So here's going to be one button, second button, third and fourth button right here. So we have four buttons. Sorry for my drawing. Obviously we have to divide this into a column layout right here at the parent scale. That's what we already have. And we are going to still use this. And this area has to be divided into a row because we are going to use up one part of the row. So one quarter right here. This is going to be the score display. That's all right. And the quarter on the right bottom is going to be our user input field. So we are going to just have four buttons in here and we are going to work on that later on. So our parent layout is going to be a column and the top column is going to be the playing field. And in the bottom column is going to be a row because in the left part of the row, so the first element of the row is going to be the scoreboard that we have not created yet. And in the next one is going to be some kind of input area. And the input area is then going to be divided again in another file so that we have it nice and clean. Let's create the scoreboard. So create a new file and let's call this the score display dot dart. Let's open it up. And in here we want to import the material stuff. So import material and then hit tab. And again, we want to create a class. Let's call this the score display. This is going to extend from the state less widget. And if we want to extend something from the state less widget, we have to overwrite the widget and build function. And in the build class, we want to return some kind of container. The width of the container is going to be something like, let's say 100 and the height as well. And then the alignment is going to be the center. So alignment.center. And we also want some kind of decoration so that we can display the score area a little bit brighter for the user. And this is just going to be a box decoration in which the border is going to be the border.all. And let's set some kind of width at something like 1.0 and the color is going to be the color.blue. And then we also want a border radius and this is going to be border radius.circular so that we don't have some kind of sharp edges. And let's say something like 10.0. Put a comma right here, let's format it. So now we have the outline of the box, but we still want to put in some child that will display the text. So let's say some kind of text. And we don't know the text, but we can put in something like score and then a backslash and and then we want to get some kind of score number. And to do that, we can just go up here and, and in the score display, let's declare some kind of final integer and score. And here I'm using a new keyboard and you can notice this in every single class, I think. It is just declaring that this score variable will not be changed anymore once it's assigned and we still have to assign it. So score display and this dot score in the constructor. So now we can work with the score variable in the build function. And in here, we're just going to put in a dollar sign and then type in score. This is one way of using the text elements in Dart. And we want to put it in the center. So text align dot center. And for the text style, just select a color and make it colors dot white. Now we can put a comma in here. And after the style right here, we can put a comma as well. Hit control shift I and format this file. So what we are doing is just creating a box that is going to be 100 by 100 pixels wide. And it's going to be aligned in the center of the area it is given. And then we want to somehow outline it with a circular border, which just means that the edges are not going to be very edgy. Then we want to put in some kind of child widget, which is just going to be the text, which will say score. And then in the, on the next line, it will say the actual score. And then we're just styling it with some kind of white color. It doesn't really matter. So let's hop now in the game.dart. And right here at the top, we want to import the score display. So import and score display. And once that is done, we can actually use it. And let's now go down to the build function. And right here where we are drawing the boards, we have a column layout and then we put the buttons into a row. And let's now work with the action buttons. Just as I showed earlier, I want to make some kind of user display or user input area. So let's make a new file and call this the user input.dart. 
And as always, we're going to import the material.dart file and then create a new class that is going to be called user input. And it's going to inherit from the or extend from the stateless widget. And we again want to override the build function and we again want to return something. So this is going to be our playing field like that and then divide it right here. And this is going to be the user section. And in the user section, we are going to have four buttons. Let's say the rotate buttons are going to be at the top and then the move left and move right buttons are going to be at the bottom. Which means that we have to actually divide this whole thing into a column. So this is going to be a column which is going to divide it this way. And then each and an individual column we have to also put in a row so that we can put two buttons next to each other. So let's just fastly do that by returning a column layout. Just as I said, it's, go it's going to be the parent. So main axis alignment is going to be the main axis alignment dot space evenly. And the children are going to be an array of widgets and in the array of widgets we want to put in two rows so one row then the second row for the top and bottom buttons like this and at the end of the return there should be a semicolon and for the rows so the first row is going to be the rotate left and rotate right button so let's jump over to dart and the action button so rotate left and rotate right be sure to cut them out with the comma right here so Control x save it and then do the, and then go to the user input and into the row we have to put in a child element with an array and then we can paste the row in here but it does not know the action button last button pressed or the function right here to know the action button we can just import an a action button dot dart and to know the last button pressed we just want to import the game dot dart and now we have just one error left that it does not know the function so let's make a final again and this is going to be a function and let's call this the on action button pressed. Let's copy this to be sure. And let's also now make a constructor. So user input and then this dot action button pressed. Now we know the function and we get no errors whatsoever. Awesome. The second row is also going to have an array with children in it, just like the first row. But this time it's going to be the left and right button. So make sure to cut it out with all the commas right here. So control X, and then you can just paste it in here like this and format it. And everything should work if you import all the files and have this constructor. Let's look at what we are doing. So the main class is a column layout. So this is the parent class of our drawing of the game board. And we want to divide the row into two areas. So the first one is going to be the score display. So score display. We included the file so that we can use it and in here we want to pass in some kind of value if you look at the score display again we have some kind of a constructor and we want to pass in a score the score is just going to be the score that we created earlier to keep track of the score and the next element in the row is going to be the user input and in here we want to pass in some kind of function but it does not know the user input right here because we still have to import the file in here so let's import the user input dart so now we can actually use it and while we scroll down let's look at the name of the function that we want to pass along to the buttons and let's just copy the name the on action button pressed and let's scroll down to the build function and right here where we create the user input we have to pass in the on action button pressed then we can save it and let's try to restart dart once we restart the app and hit the play button we are going to see our new layout so we have the score right here and if i try to finish a row okay right now if i try to finish a row so this should actually finish a row once it falls down I'm going to see that our score is going to increase by one in the exact same moment as this row disappears. Awesome, now we have a way to keep track of the current score of the player. And while we are in the game.dart, let's delete these two imports, we don't need them. So delete the main and the action.dart and while we are at it, let's go down here and let's delete the print from the changing state on the on action button press button. We don't really need the debug print anymore because we know that the buttons are working quite perfectly even after we change the layout. And while we are in this file, it's nice that we can keep track of the score but we actually have no way to lose this game. So right above the on time tick, let's create a new function and let's call this for example the bool and let's call this the player lost. And in this we are going to again have a bool a return value which is going to be set to false and then we are going to return the return value at the end of this function. And in the middle we are just going to loop through all the alive points. So alive points dot for each and in here we want to loop through e for each point. And while we are looping through each point we want to check if the point dot y is less or equal to zero of any of the given alive points then the return value is going to be set to true. Which means that if any of these points is going to be at the right top of the alive block not of the, not of the current block because the current block spawns at the top. So once the block settles down and then the y coordinate is going to be less or equal to zero then we want to lose this game and right now in the on time take function at the start right here we want to return if the current block is set to null 
or if the player has lost. So player lost is going to be true. So we can do it just like this, or we can just leave it like this. It is the same thing. So this way we do not move any rows or perform any action if the player has already lost. That's quite all right. And we also have to somehow display it. And to display it, let's go to the helper.dart that we already have created. And let's make some kind of new widget function. And this is going to be called the get game over text. And it is going to take in an integer the score amount. And in here, we just want to return some kind of widget and let's make this a center widget so that it is centered. In here, the child is going to be a new text widget in which the text is going to be equal to game over and backslash n score and let's make two dots and then is this going to be the score that we pass in so score like this and let's put a semicolon at the end let's format it this would not look very good right now at the moment because it would be a very small and black text with the basic font of flutter and let's try and style it so in the text widget let's put a comma right after the text and put in a new parameter that is called style that we have already used on the header for the Tetris game and let's put in a new text style object and the text style object is going to have a font size of something like 35.0 and and we can also format it and then the font weight is just going to be something like font weight dot bold the color let's put in something like colors dot blue so we keep the theme alive and we can also use some shadows just like we did before and this is going to take in an array of shadows and let's make a new shadow and parentheses and in here we want the color to be from the colors.black array so it pops out nicely the blur radius is going to be something like 3.0 the last parameter is going to be the offset and let's put a new, new offset widget and let's say something like 2.0 and this should look quite all right and let's put a comma at the end and format it and we can put another comma right after this bracket right here so that we have a nice formatting going on right here and let's save this and let's copy the game over text function and hop over to the game.dart and right here in the build function where we pass in a child into the container this child right now displays all the given blocks in the game and we can put a ternary operator in here depending on the state of the game let's make parentheses and let's say something if the player lost this is the function which returns a bool so if the player lost is going to be equal to false which means we are still playing then we want to draw the tetris board so this is going to be just the same as we had before but if the player has lost we do not want to draw all the blocks that we have but we want to draw the game over text so game over text and in here we want to put in the score let's save that hit Control shift i to format it and let's go right again so the child object of the container is either going to receive the draw tetris block function which is just returning every single block on the playing field the current block and the alive blocks or the game over text any condition for it is going to be if the player lost function is going to be false which means that the player has not lost then we want to draw the tetris blocks and if the player has lost then we want to draw the game over text if i restart the game and hit the play button and just play around a little bit and right now with the next tile the game should be over and now we see the game over text right here so game over end score is going to be one and we do not see any tiles anymore the end score yes it's true this should be one and now we have some kind of way to lose the game awesome but now we still have a little bug with the functionality so if i start the game and go backwards we will get some kind of error messages because we are not stopping the timer from running. Still went on and tried to t call the on time tick function, which for me resulted into a crash. You can have any other scenario. It might even work for you. Uh, this can be different for every single platform. And we, this bug was occurring from the beginning of our tutorial because we just have no way to actually access the on time tick function and cancel the timer that we started. The only thing we can do to fix this problem is that we can go and override the back arrow. So in the main.dart, if you open this file and scroll down here to the game screen right now, we have a scaffold and a app bar right here that we create. And we can override this app bar because this automatically creates a back arrow for us with some kind of function that pushes back a scene, which is quite all right for our functionality for now. But, but we want to override this current back arrow of the app bar and make our custom back arrow with our custom on click function now i'm back with a running app and in the app bar right before the title let's hit enter and we can put in a leading that is basically the spot for the back arrow and we want a new icon button which is just a type that you can use in data as well if you just want the icon for your button and we could also use this for the action buttons but i just try to use different things and basically do more complex things as we go on in this tutorial series 
And for the icon, we want to select some kind of new icon from the icons. Dot and anyway, we want to select some kind of back arrow. So let's type in back and look what Visual Studio gives us. And let's try and use some kind of back arrow iOS and let's hover over it to look, see what it looks like. So we should have this arrow right here once we click the play button to get back to the main menu. And after that, we also have to implement a new function, a on pressed. This is going to be a little bit of a weird syntax probably. So on pressed and you want async curly brackets and then the timer, which is a global variable dot cancel because we want to cancel the timer. And then we also have to go back one scene. So navigator dot and in here we just want to pop the context of the current scene right there. Awesome. In here we do not want to use commas but semicolons because this is a function and if I control shift I and then restart the game and hit the play button we should be able to lose a game and move left move right and if I hit the back arrow right now which you can see is the iOS type of the back arrow I will not get any errors because we are cancelling timer and if I restart the game we are back to square one by pushing a completely new scene as we did on the play button. This is going to be it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to finish up this tutorial series, make the game screen dynamically change the size. I hope you enjoyed this part of the tutorial series. We fixed a couple of bugs and introduced some kind of score and losing game state. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can be the first one to watch the new tutorial series. So I'll see you in the next one and bye.